Okie dokie. Am I on camera? Yeah, you're on camera. I think, I think we should probably should be live now. Hopefully. That's a weird delay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of freaky when you're watching yourself. And especially, it's even weirder because, you know, I do the, this calling thing where, like, people can... Well, like you did. You called into the sort of the show. No, we're not doing it on this one. But, yeah, that gets even weird with, like, audio yeah. delay and stuff like that. So, but don't worry too much about it. You can see it on that one. It's normal. So we're doing, like, we're doing like back-to-back -back live streams. We've just done a live stream on Amanita's channel and now we're here. But the cool thing is, yeah, Amanita Dreamer here in my home in Switzerland. And you're not Swiss, you're American. In person. <laughs> What's going on? So, yeah, I mean, this is like something we tried to make happen back in February. Because I was over in the States and... Do you want me to pour some of this? Yeah, thanks. There we go. She's drinking Swiss beer. Is that good? Cheers. Prost. Skull. Skull. All that. So yeah, so I was over in the States um, in February. We were going to try and meet up. There was some bit of personal kerfuffle and you couldn't make it. And I was gutted. We had all these things planned. And But then, yeah, just like, what a crazy world that. Like, I don't know, two people which kind of meet on the internet through this kind of mutual love of this these experiences and then it's like oh yeah you know if, you, if you're ever in switzerland come, come and look if you're like, ever as, in america yeah, as, as if it's ever gonna happen and then it's like no here we are and it's just, twice in one year what a glorious age we live in where people can just fly across the fucking atlantic ocean in tin cans and hang out with some person you met through uh through videos that we post online what is going on with the world, what, what kind of what kind of madness have we walked into, where people are wirelessly uploading videos to be watched by other people? I mean, who the fuck are we anyway? Like, why, what, 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 what the fuck are these people doing doing watching? It? But anyway, it's I'm Amanita Dreamer. If y'all want to check out my, they channel. know who you are. They, Do they know. know who I am? They know. She's she's Amanita lady. And t t tell why why are you here? Why the fuck are you even here in Switzerland? Like, what? Because I am filming a documentary about What's... the Amanita mushroom. Wow, and that's um, anything else? Anything else going on? I'm doing a ceremony tomorrow, Amanita ceremony. Well, and that and I believe somebody's attending. I definitely will be attending. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's what. So that's <laughs> tomorrow. We're going to be going off to some top secret location, and yeah, just basically do, meeting the mushroom. So let me just pop this chat in so I can see what people are saying. So I, um, I'm going to get there at noon and I'm going to start making the tea for well, the ceremony. Well, you're, you're going to get there whenever I get there. Since we're <laughs> yeah, I, he's my ride. This is, yeah, this and is then just... the film crew is going to be ready to start filming by two. And then I'll be focused on filming the documentary and interviews. And you're going to be one of the interviews. And um, at five, I go away. I become unavailable so that I can get ready for holding ceremony. And the film crew will still be there well into the night with a list of shots that I've asked them to get while I'm... So we're gonna, are you going to film the actual ceremony? Yeah, not necessarily like the whole thing. There's just certain shots I'm looking for for the documentary, for mm -hmm. the behind the scenes stuff. Like most of what we're getting is B-roll. Mm -hmm. After your interview, there's one other interview and then everything after that is all B-roll and mm -hmm. stuff. So um, let me get over here and frame. So it's just mostly going to be stuff for shots that I, because like I have it all storyboarded out and I have the script and everything written out. And there's pictures in my mind of what I want here, what I want here, what mm -hmm. I want here. And I needed ceremonial space. I needed drumming. I needed fire to tell the stories about this mushroom, mm -hmm. like in, in the past and in history and how it's been used. And then like shots of me making it. And then... Hopefully, when I get to Sweden, like I leave here and I'm going to Poland and I'm interviewing Eva Maciejczak. She's the researcher that has done the most publishing work about all of the components that are in Amanita muscaria that we know of <clears> so far. <throat> and then when I leave Warsaw, I'm going to Sweden. And in Sweden, I'm starting at the top and I'm working my way. Well, not at the top. No. Stockholm. I'm starting at Stockholm, which is like midway. Mm -hmm. And then I'm working my way through the forest all the way down looking for Amanitas. I'll have a film crew with me on one day, and we're going to do a bunch of shots with them on that day. And then after that, I'm just going to be harvesting and taking them to the hotel and drying and then shipping them home. So that's exciting. Busy. Busy, busy. And after that, I go to Iceland to do no work, go to the spa, mm -hmm. chill out before I go home. <laughs> well, I mean, I love Iceland. It's one of my yeah favorite places for, for, for pure 
I don't think I've ever heard silence as silent as I heard it in Iceland. It's just really? oh yeah, it's it's and the lights, the northern lights. And you, stuff? you won't get to see it at this time of year. I don't oh. think it only it only happens from like November through. Um, February, I think it is, or to the end of he February. You said you're hitting the mic. Are you hitting the mic? I'm hitting the mic. I'm, I'm probably doing it with my bottle. So sorry, I'm just a, I'm just an animal. Yeah, it's just if you've got any expectations of like professionalism, I've, don't just put those aside. I just haven't done. I'm just just banging things. I'm banging the table. That's what it's. I'm putting the bottle down on the uh, table. So I don't. I think most of the people that are here were here. For someone, like, someone's my saying, channel. Someone thinks we got matching outfits. It's it's not intentional. Let me let me let me tell you how the outfits came about. So I mean, Amanita Amanita's just wearing whatever she wants to wear. But I turned up this morning and I was yeah I think I'd been a bit heavy handed with her trying to make myself smell nice and manly and she was like, you got too, you, you got too much. Uh, too much like cologne on, so I was like, "Oh shit!" I'm, I was like overwhelming her, so I changed my top, and I thought I put it was, since it was a nice sunny day. So, yeah, it was, it was a quick impromptu costume costume change, but yeah, we do look nice and matching. So yeah, oh well, cool. I, I also, I just well, I thought I'd get the opportunity. I just wanted to explain a little bit about like yeah, why I've not posted a video in a while, and I am intending to post videos soon. It's it's a combination of things, mostly because, firstly. It's just been the summertime. I just wanted to take some time off to spend spend with the family. Secondly, I've had a couple of retreats going on. As you know, I was in Peru at the beginning of June. I was in Italy two weeks ago, and I've got this Amanita uh, ceremony tomorrow. So a lot going on. I've had a lot of like you know psychedelic experiences going on, but also um, yeah, just to be sort of like completely honest, when I did this um, retreat in Italy like two weeks ago, this was a San Pedro like a mescaline retreat. Oh my god, it was heavy. This this thing opened me up like a book, like emotionally like a book. And so I've really just the last two weeks, even from like my Discord server, I've just taken some time away just to get my head together. Um just work on some personal stuff. So yeah, but I'm feeling perkier again, a bit more like myself. So yeah. Um I'm gonna be posting some new stuff soon and probably I don't know, I'm sure I'll have a story to tell from tomorrow, so For this sure. is my last ceremony of the year. After this, I'll be focusing more on the documentary. I don't have anything planned for the winter solstice, and I would really like to do something for winter solstice, but I just, I'm so tired. I've been traveling all year. Yeah, it's that thing. I th you need to have some kind of downtime from, yeah, the amount, the amount of traveling that you've been doing. I, I would take like a month off or something and just. Well, I was hoping to go into post-production in November, but we're running out of money. So if any of you know anyone with expendable income, we have an investor's deck for the documentary, like the whole thing professionally done and the whole business side of that. So if y'all know of anyone that just talk about it with people you're around, you never know when someone has that kind of money to invest. If you want to send me the link, and I'll put a link in the description below afterwards and we can... So people, if they're interested, they can go on. Cause I bet well, it's AmanitaDreamer.com and just use the contact form <clears> and just send me um, an email of whomever. Send them to AmanitaDreamer.com and they can use that contact form if they want to invest. <laughs> and I'll send them to the producers who will go over the whole investor's deck. I just there's a comment from Erica's Magical Projects like matching outfits equals mushroom, mushroom cult. cult. It does look a bit like that. It no, does. No, no. We look like Hare Krishnas or something. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Jack YouTube said, "I want into the shroom cult, please." Do you know what? <laughs> I, 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 I tell you what. I, I have been thinking a lot recently about the, about this is going to sound okay. So dismiss most of what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, just because it's like a thing that's been on my mind. Like, is it possible to have like a like a good cult? Like, because, you know, we're talking, you know, we talk a lot about like, sort of like community and, you know, sort of ceremony and stuff like that. Like, yeah. And it's kind of, I think it's natural to think like, God, if yeah, you could just have this, like, something like, I've been watching these documentaries on the Mormons and don't get me wrong, I think the Mormons are mental, right? But, you know, that they kind of are living their dream. I know it turned into a bit of a nightmare, but, you know, they all move close to each other and they all, like, share these families and stuff. I mean, I know they share the families a bit much, <laughs> like, but, you know, they do that and I was like, okay, so with, I'm, I'm not I'm not going for polygamy here. That's not what I'm, I'm, I'm advocating for. But what I'm saying is, like, some kind of community where, you know, you're living this kind of, like, entheogenic um, 
life and you know this culture and you were sort of you were you know in it together bringing your own skills and i'm like is this a cult do i want to start a cult like but it's it would be a good cult like it would be a <laughs> well it's not first of all i believe religion took the way we used to live tribally Mm. communally, mm. using entheogens, mm. having all of our ceremonies, celebrations, and rituals that kept us connected as a community, mm -hmm. and turned that into something negative. And any word that they could use to stigmatize it, yeah. they do. And then, don't get me wrong, cults are bad. Cults that take your money and abuse you and use a lot of brainwashing tactics, that's shitty. But just because you live communally or you live tribally or you live all in a close area and you come together on a regular basis to ceremony with different entheogens and you all have very similar beliefs but you're also friends and you visit each other and then you have a lot of cookouts together and you eat a lot of meals together that's mm. churches do that shit. they just drink the blood of the lamb of god yeah well yeah i mean you but know. <laughs> they still have all these communal things that they do and help each other with and all these potluck dinners and all these celebrations in the church and vacation mm. Bible school and all that, but that's not stigmatized. Mm. But like what I want to do with Amanita is once I get the documentary made and then like the year that it comes out and I go on that tour where we're promoting it and, and holding screenings and holding ceremonies, big ceremonies mm -hmm. with it. After that, my goal is to see if it actually makes any money or anything and if my channel grows. I can move somewhere and get land. It's got a huge open field, and then on every equinox and every solstice, we're holding a big Amanita ceremony, mm. and it can hold you know several hundred people camping on the perimeter of it around the big fire. We all weekend long we're doing Amanita yeah. and beating those drums, and then we're having barters and exchanges, and it's a chance for people to come together four times a year. And celebrate, that's a, you know. Yeah, because that's a, if if you had a you know if, if if we put this into like a tribal context, like if you went to a village in South America and it was a village, but every Sunday they met up in the in the communal space and drunk ayahuasca, you wouldn't describe it as a cult. You describe it as a village, you know. You describe it as a community. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing where I think, I think it's actually where we when people talk about the psychedelic renaissance, that's what we need to get to. Because at the moment, with you know, we talk about a psychedelic community and we're really we are people connected via the online, you know, online presence. And that's, that's fine, but that's a new layer and it's good for what it is. But having that kind of physical presence is something, and it doesn't necessarily even need to be people living together. I, I actually think re retreats are a form of this. So just like you say, it doesn't even need to be a weekly thing. Um, but I think the thing which I find concerning slightly about um, the way that retreats are going is that they are becoming more and more commercialized. And what I want to see is a way to still have the same benefits that come from retreat, but retreat, but have it baked into a community rather than it being something where you have to fork over like several thousand, you know, books every every time, time you right. want it. But it's something which just as baked into the community as what the Christian church is, but, you know, but within its own thing. So, yeah, it's something I'm kind of, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm not like taking serious, but I am like thinking like, yeah, how, you know, you, you get, you know, villages and communities formed and things like eco-villages, or you even get like, you know, like vegan villages and stuff like that. Why not an entheogen village? You know, that's good. Well, I've been they? traveling all year, and I'm telling you, the numbers of people that are saying this and doing this and planning this mm -hmm. and intending this, it's insane. Mm. Everywhere that I go, everywhere that I travel, everywhere I'm holding ceremony, People are talking about this. They're doing it. I'm showing up to places to hold ceremony where they've bought land mm -hmm. and they're building that community. And I believe there's, if this is what's happening and I'm hearing about it everywhere, can you imagine what the world's going to look like 20 years from now if these people plan these intentional communities? I think, yeah. For, I mean, for the people who who get on board with it, then then yeah. And I think that's, that's another thing which I think I'd like to see come from this kind of cycle of renaissance is something that can become uh, more scalable. You know, because again, if we talk about something like like retreats, something the very they, I, I absolutely love retreats, but they are very insular and they've only got a certain scale. 
something, and that's obviously where, this is something where we've got to give like kudos to like the Christian church. They scaled that fucking operation like to crazy levels. So yeah, something like that. I don't know. I'm just kind of I'm just riffing on these because I, I love this idea of the psychedelic community being an actual community. Um, and yeah, how can we how can we expand it from places like YouTube and Reddit and stuff to what you looking at? What have you spotted? Oh, I'm looking at the comments. We've got, we've got. Sounds like bliss. Some, someone's quoting Alastair Crowley here. Do what thou wilt, that shall be the hall of the law. Love is the law, love underworld. Is that, is it, is it, is it Thelema, is it called? That sort yeah, of. Yeah, he's a Thelemite. Yeah, yeah. Braino. Okay. So I did DMT today. For those of you that weren't in my live chat, it's my first time and I did DMT. It's been like three or four hours now since I did it. What did you think of DMT, Amanita Dream? It was shitty. I don't ever <laughs> want to do it again. <laughs> She's not joking. She had a really rough time. I was, oh my God. Do, do, you know, do you know what I learned today from, I think I learned, well, I, this actually ties into my cold idea. I think I'm, I've learned I probably shouldn't give people <laughs> <laughs> give people medicine because it's it's yeah I I, I mean yeah I it, I felt bad I felt bad that you had a bad experience I felt like I um I, I wanted you to have that this this awesome it's the kind of thing that I've spent so much time gushing over and that yeah and it, and that just didn't play out for you at but all. But I'm going through a rough patch because I'm really tired. I've been traveling all year. I'm autistic. I need my home. I need my cats. I need my routine. Every time I travel, it's really difficult. And I've had something really stressful happen right before I left. And like, I'm having to deal with home and deal with me. And then I had this really large psilocybin experience like three days ago, which right now the whole thing, I, I talked about it as soon as it was over. The whole trip report is on my private patron community on mushroomvoice.com. And then I'll upload it to my uh, public website, like in a couple of weeks. I just think I've got a lot on my plate. Yeah. I'm, it's been a long year. I think that I'm, I'm trying to get ready for tomorrow. I've got a lot of communication going on about tomorrow, about filming. I think that it was my mind reflecting back my current state although i'm not in a negative mindset do you think, it's just do you think it was something we kind of like rushed into just because it was like we're like we're here just capture the opportunity no i've been thinking about doing it for oh i know you i know you've been thinking i know, I know it's been on the on the on the sort of list but here no i was going to do it here i know i've been intending that i know I, I know that's why i got it i got it ready for you <laughs> but i mean but given what the stuff that has happened then i don't know what do you think? Well, I mean, I'm glad I did it because I'm, I'm I've just never done it. it. Yeah. I don't have anything to compare it to, and I wanted to understand what's there. It was my experience. It was the experience I had, and if I if my mind was working with it, my mind made that experience, and that just that's where I am. This reminds me of a video I made about there's no such thing. <laughs> no such thing as my trip. Shameless plug, God. No. And then I made one because I loved yours so much. I was like, damn it, I've been meaning to make that same video. So I made my video on my take on a bad trip, and it's on my channel. But it's so, it, to think it's such a good topic because it's people, something people get really um, passionate about. And I've seen like people get really upset over that sort of suggestion that there's no such thing as a, as a bad trip. And it's just a phrase of delight. It sounds like you're dismissing their experience but you're not you're just trying to say try and look at it in a different way you know well uh, people would say what i had today was a bad trip i didn't sure. see it as a bad trip i just didn't enjoy the experience and i was kind of disappointed that i didn't get something that i had heard about <clears throat> but i don't classify it as a bad trip and what happened um i hit it really 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 hard and i was able to hold it really long mm -hmm. and then as, but as soon as i started to go um, of course, it's scary because you don't know what to expect, but my feet and hands went numb, mm -hmm. and then it was moving up my arms rapidly, and then I've never had that feeling before, and it reminded me of Neo sticking his hand in the liquid, and it was starting to yeah, take yeah, yeah, yeah. his hand, it's cold, and it's cold. it scared me. Like, I got that imagery in my head, and it scared me, so that's why I grabbed your hand. Mm -hmm. Right when I was going, I grabbed your hand, and I tried to keep my eyes open to just wait for it to fully take over so that when I went, I would go. And I went, but as soon as I popped in, 
There was a concrete wall right here. It's like, what the fuck is a concrete wall doing here? That's not in D&T. Yeah. Hyperdimensional concrete, uh, hyperdimensional, so uh, yeah, sort of like Russian architecture. <laughs> <laughs> and so if I looked to that side <clears throat> over the concrete wall, there was this hill, grassy hillside and on the other side of it, some public space that was made like in the 60s or 70s. And it was terrifying to look at. So I'm like, whoa, I'm going to go look at that. And it was all those DMT beings that were all there in all of their color. But they were, the sound was going, ee, 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 etching <clears throat> kind of sound. And it was really annoying, like metal. I wonder if something, me and Rachel were having a conversation this morning. I can't remember why we were talking about it, but we were talking about Chernobyl. Okay. So like Soviet constructed Cold War concrete reactors. What the fuck, okay. man? And then when... Obviously, when like you know, when there's radiation in the area, those Geiger counters go. <laughs> so and Dreamer what? did DMT in our room on the bed where me and Rachel were having this conversation. So maybe it was like we left some echo of like Cold War, That's Soviet crazy. brutal architecture. It had that feeling. Mm. It was a very gross place that I didn't want to look at, and it was very kind of well, concrete. Oh. Grass and then gray metal shit and like a public concrete platform out in front of it. And I did not want to look at it or go there. And all I kept hearing was just that sound. Well, yeah, why would we... Why? I'm trying you to remember. left that hanging in the I air. I did, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not just me, you can blame Rachel. Why were we talking about Chernobyl? I can't, I can't... Was it because we were talking about the Ukraine or something? I don't know. But anyway... So then the, the beings, you know, the, whatever they are, whatever y'all call them, instead of laughing or making cool faces, they were snarling at me and making and all these like haka kinds of faces. Haka? You know, the, the New Zealander, they do the oh, haka. Oh, right, yeah, no, no, no. They were no. making that kind of face at me and like, and I'm like, why are y'all doing that? Be nice. And then there was this one that kept flying in and getting in my face, and he was all jagged, and he'd fly back out. And then someone just rolled down from the top, and they were spiky edges to them, you know? And they would just stare at me, you know, and they'd go, And I'm like, why are y'all being so intimidating and mean? This sucks. And I just kept staying with it, thinking, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go somewhere. This is an initiation. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're just seeing if I'm worthy, mm-hmm. like whatever. And eventually I got so sick of it, I was like, well, maybe they could help me with a problem in my personal life. Like, I could get something out of it that's worth something. But the whole time I was panicking because I couldn't breathe, and my heart was pounding, and I thought that I was dying because I couldn't catch my breath, and I kept breathing really deep, just <gasps> trying to, lay. and I don't know if I was breathing normally. You seem to be breathing. Was like, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you looked to, externally; it looked like you were fine. You were smiling, and you were kind of like your hands were sort of doing this. I was trying to grab them and push them out of the way. Oh my god! I just, it was like, get the fuck out of my face! You're gross. Stop. But there's something. <laughs> a, a comment here, which I think is, is kind of relevant. This. So where has it gone? Uh, Shen Miaozo is talking about uh, my one and only DMT trip was bad, and it was the wrong music. Now the interesting thing with this, or what, what I, what kind of yeah, is that um, she did it in complete silence. So I normally, do, when I normally do DMT trips, I normally do it to music, but Rachel started experimenting with doing DMT in, in silence and sort of like making her own music by sort of singing and vocalizing. So she recommended to Amanita Dreamer to do that. And I think for me, the music is like such an integral part. And maybe I think, yeah, I, I, I can't help but think that you, you might have had a better experience with some music. But Shem, Shem Yozo says here that... Um, just to show how kind of like much music influences these things that they put on uh, a, a song called uh, Breathe by The Prodigy, which is one of the most aggressive <laughs> sort of... I love, that, I love that song so much, but yeah, I cannot ima- I imagine that gels well with the, you know, the harmonious vibe you're going for with sort of a DMT trip. So yeah, Breathe by The Prodigy, like this... I don't know if you've heard it, like this, this Cockney guy going like, Breathe the pressure! Come play my game, I'll test you. Oh ya. my god, it's like, no. Psychosomatic, <laughs> and you can see. Like, it's, yeah, it's hectic. You know what I like um, is the cornfield chase. Mm, from from Interstellar, yeah. Interstellar, yeah. Hans Zimmer. 
But then when I got to a point where it was just getting really annoying and the panic was just getting really, really bad, mm -hmm. I asked them to just help me with this problem in my personal life. And immediately the sound stopped. It went completely silent. Everything went black and white and it was still rolling mm -hmm. and moving. The faces were still there. It was just total black and white and zero sound. Mm -hmm. As soon as I thought that thought, mm -hmm. And the whole rest of the trip, I just sat there going, are you kidding me? Like, this sucks. Come on. And I kept trying to wake up and get out of it because I was like, this sucks. And it just kept rolling and looking at it. And I was just sitting there like, y'all, come on. Yeah, Can I have the I, I color feel back? So bad. I feel so bad. Give me the color back, please. Well, they never did give me the color back. And then finally I said, release me. I just kept saying, release me. Release I'll, me. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Next time I come to the States, if you're feeling up for it, then we'll try this again. <laughs> then, but, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, I, feel, I feel like I, I owe you the proper experience and I'm going to I'm gonna talk to the spirits and find out what's, what's going on there. Just, uh, I, there's another comment regarding music where someone was saying, where is it? Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, I don't recommend music with lyrics and vocals for deep trips anymore, especially yeah. for neurodivergent folks. No. Yeah, I would totally agree. Absolutely. I can't listen to music. Well, the only song I can listen to is Shine On You Crazy Diamond by Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. I can listen to that. But no, you're right. I agree. I'm I'm autistic and I can't listen to anything with lyrics when I'm tripping. Well, I'm, I'm saying, I think it's anything where you can... I think it's good to have like music as, as like a background sort of you know thing for your track. But anything if your brain can like lock onto it. So like something where... Because if you start listening to the lyrics, something then that's a, that's their story, and it's not necessarily it's not your, your story. story. Yeah. And it's same even stuff with um, specific beats where it kind of where, it, where you, you you can sort of like lock in and, and like synchronize with that. So I prefer like really ambient stuff, like really trippy, synthy, wavy, swirly sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's that's kind of my go-to stuff for uh, tripping tunes. Um, we re-recorded re this today, my doing DMT, and I put it on my um, Mushroom Voice website for my patrons. And then after a couple of weeks, I'll upload it to my personal website, AmityDreamer.net, where I keep <clears> all my content because YouTube, unlike you, hates me. And they take down all my content and strike me and then take me out of my channel for a week. So... <clears throat> <laughs> Unless you want to upload it to your channel, which you can get away with, which you... Oh, well, if, if you're happy with it, I'll, I'll do or at least a preview of it, and then maybe yeah. I can show it. Um, yeah, someone's mentioned around the shaman singing during trips, and I think this is the same principle, because particularly when you, when you go to one of these South American retreats, the singing is so alien to you. It's, it's not a language you understand. It's not something you can lock onto. It's just these completely different... Tempos and polyrhythms, yeah. And it's but it's, oh, it's yeah, it's amazing. So it's that's why I kind of love these kind of Shipibo traditional ceremonies. But here's a good question for us. <clears throat> oh well, there's actually two things. May you all pause for a picture I can screenshot on my phone to draw while I trip later. Pause. B. Cool. <laughs> and then. Um, that's the first <laughs> yeah I don't think I'm going to be asked for that and then someone said what was the most insightful thing you've taken back from a breakthrough or let's just say taken back from any kind of experience do you want to go with that one my really big psilocybin trip uh, about four days ago they told me in no uncertain terms repeatedly throughout the four hours of very intense work over and over and over they said from here on out you are not Amanita Dreamer or the human or the job you are a spiritual being flowing through your life very slowly and <clears throat> gracefully. And then you'll take moments where you'll be a human and do the human things. And that is my work from here on out for the rest of my life. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm not necessarily going to go with what was most insightful thing because I, that varies. It would be hard to pick, but I'll just go with one that just springs to mind. And that was... Um, to not treat my mind like a toilet. Um, just, I, at the time I was just kind of realized I was filling my brain with all sorts of just bullshit of just like outrage things like, oh fucking, fuck this politician and like, fuck this, oh these people are against me, fuck them. And it's like, and I just realized I was just filling my mind with sewage. And I, I, I was literally, I was having this ayahuasca experience and I was seeing 
all these kind of like sewage system. It looked like something out of Super Mario, yeah. all these green pipes and stuff. It was not it was really cool. It was like those green pipes. And I was like, yeah, your mind is not a toilet. Stop filling your mind with shit. Like, you know, just like you would, you know, you want the best food, the most nourishing food. Like, why would you watch fucking like the garbage that we have for like news these days? Just why would you watch it? Just stop you have to stop putting shit into your brain put good things in put the good things into your brain just like you want to put the good things into your body just like you want to put the good things into your life so yeah that was one of the I was like yeah that makes sense <laughs> and so I, I try and stick with that and, and keep away from as much from like outrage kind of shit or even just a lot of stuff in the news because I, I realise that the stuff in the, in the news um, it's a lot a lot of it's just propaganda it doesn't mean it's false um, but it means that there's like a spin on it, which is propaganda, which I, I'm not interested in. I don't want to be um, get involved in that. So I, 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 yeah, I curate what I put in my head. So I hope you find that useful. Um, <clears throat> Perry Sci-Fi says, oh, so somebody, Erica's Magical Project says Osric Tentacles, which I'm not sure what, what you're referencing there, but I will tell you that I like Osric Tentacles. Osric Tentacles is a band, and I've been watching Osric Tentacles a few times. I used to go, uh, when I was, like, back in the 1990s, I used to go to these events that were on called uh, Mega Dog Events in Manchester, where Osric Tentacles were, like, part of, like, the Planet Dog record label. So, yeah, Osric Tentacles, if you know the band, they do some really trippy music. Um, so 180 Degrees says, do you think you go to DMT land when you die? <clears throat> Ooh, well, that's... A, well... What is what is DMT? Well, honestly, when I've done high doses of mushrooms, of <coughs> psilocybin, I go to the same, a very similar place of machinery with the same colors, with those same kinds of entities. And on Amanita, I've seen pieces and fractures of those, echoes of those places. Mm -hmm. It, that seems to be a theme across all of it. Mm. And it makes me wonder, like I've been told at different times that this was a simulation and when it freaked me out, they're like, nope, you didn't hear that. We didn't say that. And then they take it back and say that it's not. And it's very confusing. And I've just decided that I'm really not gonna make a decision. I'm gonna put a flag anywhere in it. But I do believe there must be something going on for that same sort of theming to show up in every DMT is not a natural substance; it's man-made, and know, yet I'm DMT seeing DMT is entirely natural. The kind that you smoke. Well, that it, it's like extracted from it, but it's still it's still natural. So it would it's, still it's, come I mean, from that same. But it's, so it's, then, if they <clears throat> and the mushrooms are still giving us that same experiences of those same machines, like mm. why are they talking about it? One's a mushroom, one's a plant, and then we're a, an animal experiencing it. Yeah, just just to sort of pass that one out so kind of taking dmt out of something like back to me i don't think it's any different to making a tea with mushrooms because that, basically you make a tea with mushrooms you to take the psilocybin out of the mushrooms into the water and that's kind of basically what you're doing here with oh, dmt okay. you, you take out the dmt and then dry yeah. out the dmt so cool. i don't that's think it's cool. anything tiffany hey girl <clears throat> Tiff, just want to, just want you both to know I love you all. I'm sending you all both my good vibes. Cheers, Tiff. We love you too. Hey, lady. You've been such a such a part of both our lives, and yeah. And Tiff, I'm probably going to be coming back to the states um, probably about the same time next year, so we can catch up then. Um, let's see. There was something else that I saw uh, before. Da, 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 da. Some other people commenting on our outfits. So is this, is this a cool type of... Was that on, was that on the previous live stream? Yeah, explain how we wound up like this. Yeah, so ba basically, yeah, I I was I had a black t-shirt on before, but I'd put on too much um, aftershave and it was just... I showed up like this today. Yeah, and, and, I, and I was just, yeah, I was overpowering you with my stench because I was, I, was <laughs> I was trying to impress you. So, and the first thing I said was, "Dude, I'm autistic and sensitive. Like, I can't deal with yeah, cologne." I, I was. I, it, it was. Just, it was just one one stream of of, of input too many. So, yeah, yeah. So I changed it, and this was just the first thing around. And I love this top anyway because it's all light and fluffy, and it's been kind of warm today. So cool. So, um, Perdition Media asks, "Have you ever experienced paranormal experiences during your trip?" <laughs> the whole thing is paranormal. <laughs> well, what is paranormal? So, I mean, my my answer to that would be. No, because if it happens, then it's not paranormal. That's how I how I see it. If it's 
yeah, paranormal would be, have to like be something. I don't know. It would, yeah, something outside of what? Oh, what I was. Shit. Oh shit! What? what? Y'all! Oh my god! Hmm. Reality. I breaking. took the mushrooms at three. It hit me ten minutes later, and I was gone. There were no waves. There was no come up. Mm-hmm. I was gone. I worked for four hours straight, nonstop. She had to help me get to the toilet when it was when I was still tripping very much, but could sort of walk. And then I had to rest a lot, so like another hour. So I am still just really fucking tripping. It was a really high dose. And I went outside because I needed air. And her can, husband can, can, played can, guitar. Can I just add a bit of context here? So, so what she's describing, she's not describing something that happened today. She's describing something that happened a few days ago. Four days ago. Four days ago. Okay, go. And her husband's playing guitar, and I'm just crying because of the sadness of some stuff that I had learned about in the trip and things that I'm going to have to grieve in my life. And... I'm just crying through the whole time he's playing. I'm just crying and crying and crying and crying. And I'm still seeing colors. You know, the bushes are still rotating and moving and it's beautiful, but I'm sitting up and enjoying everything. Then all of a sudden, y'all, I heard this sound. This sound just starts going, and it was heavy and deep in my body. And, and everything I was sitting on was going, and it starts shaking and vibrating. I'm like, am I tripping again? Like I'm supposed to be coming down and I'm freaking out and it's the, I've never heard a sound that bass that loud that was also felt in my body that deeply and finally I realized like you know how you go can you see that but you know no one can so eventually when you trip enough mm-hmm. you quit asking yeah, yeah, people yeah. it was so profound that I looked at her husband and he looked at me and it's like are you hearing it and I'm like oh shit you can hear it it turned out it was an earthquake. Yeah. A real fucking earthquake. Yeah, we had like an earthquake in Switzerland. <laughs> While this, I was tripping. <laughs> yeah, this just like never happened. Oh, it's just, I, I've never, in like the eight years I've lived in Switzerland, I've never experienced an earthquake. She's here for like two minutes and just like, yeah, the fucking <laughs> apocalypse is starting. So <laughs> like the, the ground is splitting and shit. Oh so. my God. Stupid, and so he was. Yeah. They were like, "Well, okay, wow." And then, like, one of the guitar strings broke in the other room, and, and we heard it pop. And then, like, an, a, a mandolin string popped. And then, like, a storm rolled in. And after record drought, and yeah, like, yeah. what else are you gonna yeah, do? I was like, well, "Play the road the road test. Away, Yeah, the fucking yeah, the river ro- turned red. <laughs> like, uh, I think like my first one child's gonna die tonight. So yeah, all, all sorts of shit going on. It's it's always fun. It's fun when people come to visit. So yeah, hope that I'm answers your questions. Are. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, what's with the synchronicities when tripping? Oh, so it's, it's perdition media. What's with synchronicities when tripping? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think synchronicities happen all the time. Anyway, I don't know. I don't really put too much thought into it. But what, what about you? You think synchronicities while tripping i'm very careful about cognitive bias Mm. so if you're like oh my god i'm seeing 111 11 11 444 and then there's that whole cognitive bias where you see it a lot but you're just trying to pay attention to it now Mm -hmm. or after you've tripped and there's there's always been coincidences but you just give it more value and more weight in a certain time yeah i think about that like i take that um, bias into account and yet i cannot deny that my life became overwhelmed with coincidences and things lining up and synchronicities once I started using Amanita. Mm-hmm. And they started happening so regularly that they weren't like two or three times a week, but every hour, every single day to the point that it got absurd. But it also coincided with my life just turning around and getting so much better and getting happy and all this growth. And this community started growing and I started really learning. You can learn something. Mm. And what I've learned in these synchronicities for me is when they happen, it, it is a message. It's not just confirmation. And usually the message for me is remember to breathe and just have faith. Mm-hmm. Keep trusting and keep doing what you're doing. Follow your joy. Keep following your joy and you'll just keep getting more of this. Yeah. So that's what I do now as I <clears> use the synchronicities to go, yep, just just keep doing that. <laughs> do, do you subscribe to kind of like law of attraction styles stuff? I do. I have a whole like course mm-hmm. on manifesting using Amanita, but I have a whole different take on it. 
Cause, it's cause, nothing cause, like what anybody says. Because I say it's a ve- there's a very broad spectrum of what this means from yeah. people who would say like, if you yeah, if I imagine this glass to be full, then it will be no. full. And there's a lot of gaslighting bullshit that happens in that stuff, and like makes you feel guilty and makes you worry because you're going through a rough patch and you're thinking negative things. It, that's wrong. And I talk about dimensions and like what they really are. Like it's not. People talk about like, oh, she just dis- she just appeared in the bathroom. She dimension hopped, and it's like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. It I make it concrete, like makes really good sense, and it's not woo, mm-hmm. you know. And I understand what they're trying to say, mm-hmm. and that the missing link, the missing piece, is amanita because amanita is the time mushroom, and it's a tool, and you can actually use it to manipulate time, and then use that to create with, mm-hmm. and it's what I've been doing. Since I first started using it, it taught me that. And so I'm trying to share it with other people. And that's when I started understanding how you really can manipulate your world while you're under the influence of Amanita. Well, I think that that's the, the, sort of what you described about seeing these synchronicities. I think that when you start making positive change in your life, then, I mean, that is what you do. You are creating synchronicity. So... So that's how I kind of think of it is that I don't think synchronicity is just some just sort of like a magic event that's like, oh, but you kind of, you make potential for these things to be able to occur. Like if you, if you just sat there cowering, you know, in your room, locked off from the world and whatever, then yeah, the no synchronicity is going to, because there's no potential for them to happen. Whereas if you're going out, reaching out to people, engaging socially, doing sort of, you know, very novel things like taking psychedelics and stuff, then yeah, the potential for those things to happen just increases. Well. That's how I think of, of synchronicities. Um, Do you to... remember a year and a half ago when I said I don't believe in spirituality? Uh, I did, yeah. I was like... Psh, and now look at me. I'm no, all like... You goddamn fucking... <laughs> I'm the one going spirituality, synchronicities, yeah. manifesting. It's you're time. Like, I don't it's know. Like, I'm jumping across the... I don't know. You're kind of creating them because you're doing it. <laughs> now you're the one like... I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I've got my own sort of video on what I think spirituality is. So, I, but I, I think, I, yeah, I think, I, I would consider myself a spiritual person. Um, but Oxytism asks, and thank you very much, Oxytism, for the super chat. Have you ever taken DMT while on psilocybin? You. Okay, that was a positive. I'm guessing that one's a no since it's the first time she's done DMT today. For myself, um, I can't actually remember but I, I can tell you what i do remember uh, i have taken it while i've been on lsd and honestly it was fucking amazing um and yeah what, what happened was we were, i was at a we were at a big um there was like a psychonaut picnic event that happens here in switzerland sort of once a year and all like a big group of psychonauts we get together and you know do some stuff together and we took some lsd we wrote by the by the lake and we sort of so it was just an amazing day and um and yeah we did a bit of DMT while, while there, and the trees just turned into like cosmic nature Lego, and we were just it was just fucking amazing. And then this branch snapped off in the wind, and this area. So this wasn't here where I live. This was another place where there's just this huge source. So we're in the middle of this field, and we're just tripping out and all stuff. And then this branch snaps off from this tree blows on the wind and just coshes me across. out of all the people across this fucking branch just like and i was like this is a sign this is i'm supposed to do something like I me mean, first of all it was like what the fucking hell but then i was like i'm supposed to do something with this branch and it became like my <laughs> friend who, who's been on like an ayahuasca treat my kind of like uh ch- chapaca sort of these are like my rattles like ch- 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 and I, was, I was rattling these leaves like a medicine man like this was like the sacred <laughs> the sacred twig of that that was my i was meant to do something with this twig i didn't actually do anything with it i think i took it home and left it on the balcony but I, but it, yeah it was um it was fucking crazy um so yes i i have done it and um i i, I don't want to be too like gung-ho with these things i say I'm, I'm usually I'm not big on mixing substances. I always think it's better to take the characteristics of one experience on its own. But um, yeah, I, I would say if you're doing sort of something like recreationally, like sort of LSD, a bit of DMT. So it's a, it's a nice it's a nice twist to it. Um, from seeking something asks, what's your opinion on time during trips? Hmm. A a well, psilocybin, I mean, that's just a time distortion, so you're not really sure how long you've been gone or whatever. 
But Amanita is the time mushroom, and it teaches you about time <clears throat> the whole time that you're on it. It messes with with this moment, and then this moment, and then this moment, and it's talking to you the whole time about space, about time, about multiple realities in time, collapsing time. Mm -hmm. The lessons are about time. It will make you feel like you urgently got to get somewhere, and then it'll laugh at you because it took you forever to get there when you felt like you got there quickly, and it. And then the rabbit, you know, I'm late, I'm late for a very important mm -hmm. date in Alice in Wonderland. It's it's the mushroom that teaches you about time, and then you can manipulate time while you're on Amanita, which I don't do on psilocybin. Mm -hmm. But I have a whole video on, on on comparing the two and how they work differently to me. Yeah, it's it's. A, it's I think the way I would answer that... Um, I don't know. I, I can say that when I during, during some of my DMT trips, I've had some very strange thoughts about time. I think I've made a couple of videos where I talk about like sort of par being in parallel timelines and parallel streams of consciousness, like parallel, like Rob in sort of multiple formats. And then, you know, you can start going down all kinds of rabbit holes about like, you know, am I even the same person now as I was when I was a kid, you know, like it feels like there's some kind of continuation there, but am I just like a new version of myself in every moment? And then when you got these parallels, so you can, you can go to some really strange rabbit holes. Out. Um, my kind of, I think where I kind of tend to come back to is just that I am, you know, I think we, we are kind of moving through, or at least the perception the way that we're interpreting it is that we're moving through a linear experience of time. But I think time itself is probably like, I, I think that's just the way we are interpreting it because that's the only way we can interpret it. Um, but yeah, time itself is that you can fucking... It's a weird and fascinating topic to explore on psychedelics. We're going to do it tomorrow night. What? We're going to time travel tomorrow night. I'm going to take you let's, through time travel. Let's do that then. Here's a good question uh, from Jules Drums. If you could never take psychedelics again, would you still be able to be satisfied with life without them? In other words... When do we transcend psychedelics? Do we even need to strive for that? That's a fucking great question. Do you want to go with that one? Well, my mental health is such that I've been through so much trauma and abuse my whole life that Amanita mm. brought me out of suicide and a life of panic. And if I don't always have it, I will eventually start to go back into that because I've only been using Amanita for three years and psilocybin for a year and a half. So for you, it's like a symbiotic relationship that you're, yeah. you're kind of having. And, it, and, and I need psilocybin to help me through issues and problems and new things that I come <coughs> to. I think if I got to a place where I was healthy, happy, mentally stable, had a life that was predictable, safe, calm, I could probably be okay without them, but not the current life that I'm in right now, where I live and the amount of money that I have and my mental health and still trying to learn and grow and f I'm, I'm a baby still mm. at this and if I didn't have any more right now I don't think I'd be okay yeah I think from from my side because I've, I've, I've not got that same kind of symbiotic relationship um, like what dreamers talk about for me these are kind of these have been just I say just but that's yeah, that, I mean they've, they've been fucking amazing um, these have been tools which have opened my mind and my heart in sort of ways I didn't dream was possible. And I've got to, you know, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest here. There is something about some of those experiences that I've had whereby if I could like flick a switch and have them like every day, then like why wouldn't I? These these are some of the most blissful experiences. This is this is like utopia um, experiences, like you know the peak human experience. But I think I kind of recognise that you know these it, it would sort of cheapen it to be able to have that every day. And so certainly the the goal I think would be and and when well, I think when you get shown with these kind of like visions of utopia of of like a bliss of ecstasy, then I think what the what's coming back to me there is. This is what we need to get to. This is what we need to make life on this planet like this. We need to, this is going back into my cult again, <laughs> but, but, but you know, we, we need to like, yeah, th these, if, if we can experience utopia, then why can we not experience it in, in all states? So yes, I would love um, for us to sort of be able to, to get to those states and so not have to strive for those kind of experiences. 
honestly, where I'm at right now, at my place in my journey as, as a kind of a flawed human being, um, if I could never take psychedelics again, I'd be fucking gutted uh, because I I recognize that I, I there is something in these experiences that I, I just love. They, I mean, I think they do help me in that they kind of kick me out of a lot of my the bullshit, the sort of stress and, you know, the stuff I've talked about. But they just, you know, I, I forget how awesome things can be. I forget how, you know, awesome life can be and this planet can be and even, you know, things like, things like my family and stuff. And sometimes I'd, in gratitude and just joy. And so, yeah, they, they help me to, to in, in ways I, yeah, I, I wish I could just turn those things and I wish I could just be that sort of perfect person. But, um, so yeah, if I could never take psychedelics again, I, I mean, this sounds like a bit a bit addicty sort of thing, but I mean, I, I'd, I'd, I'd get by, but I would be gutted. It would be like if I could never go swimming in the sea again, I'd be fucking gutted. But also, like, they're, they're medicine, and if you take Paul Stamets' point of view that we evolved on the African savanna mm -hmm. to what we are now because of mushrooms and psilocybin and other psychedelics, and they are in... in intricately woven into our DNA and our psyche and our intelligence and they're also medicine then that would be like asking someone what if all natural medicine disappeared or what if all pharmaceutical yeah. medicines disappeared would you be okay yeah it's like no mm. I mean medicine is medicine animals eat the right herbs and plants that they need and it's medicine the earth and medicine and living things are symbiotic and I think yeah, when we're symbiotic, being you know, we you know we we crave like you know the company of like you know life partners to sort of complete us and friends to sort of complete us. So I think yeah, this is an, an extension of these kind of relationships that we have. This is a, like an, it's an interspecies sort of relationship that that you're having with these things. So um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I would be just as gutted to miss out on psychedelics as I would be to be able to you know to never be able to go outside or swim in the sea or something like that. Um, comment here from STS. Have you have you seen everything everywhere all at once? I haven't, and it's I want to. It's fucking amazing. It's Is such, it really? It's really good. Especially, no one's been able to explain what it's about, but I think if you do, you, 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 you yeah, can. you don't want to, you don't yeah. want to know. You don't want to know. I would say it's like, it's yeah, I, I, it's up there with something like The Matrix in terms of like where you are just like, wow, this is a really good fucking movie. This is like. So, yeah, it's a great right, movie. Well, but... if you like it, then I'm going to watch it. So here's one for you. Dreamer from Seeking Something. Dreamer, can you please tell us... Oh, shit, what time are we going on anyway? Yeah, okay. I'm getting tired. Yeah, okay, we'll make this the last question because we're going to have to shoot off because we've got ceremony tomorrow. So, Dreamer, can you please tell the story about your travel through multiple lifespans on the mushroom? Rob, do you have any stories about these other personalities or lifetimes? So on that psilocybin trip, I uploaded my trip report to Mushroom Voice, my private patron community, um, and I'll I'll put it over where on somewhere over on AmityDreamer.net in a couple of weeks. But what happened? What they told me, the mushrooms told me, was that you know how you reincarnate over and over and over into different lifetimes. Well, the Earth is shifting and changing and doesn't have the energy to support us doing that for a while. And so now all of these different agreements that you were working on you can't anymore, that it can't support that many humans reincarnating that many times. And so um, timelines are collapsing. And they showed me like visually different people's lifetimes and my lifetimes, and they were just sort of collapsing into one and ending. And they said, there's gonna be a lot of grieving that you're gonna have to do for the fact that if there were other things you were gonna do, or if there were things you didn't finish in this lifetime, and you've got all this debt or you've got other people you wanted to come here with you're going to have to end it now grieve it now and move on and you're going to feel really confused but that a lot of people are going through this right now and there's a lot of confusion and then they also said you know when my i had a traumatic event happen when i was five and when it happened i remember laying down and feeling my death feeling like i was going to die and i felt pieces of me leave my body when i was five and they showed me her they said she did die your soul fractured and you she left your body and we've been holding her here this whole time and we're going to give her back when you're at the end of this trip but right now you have a lot of other work to do and they did give her back at the end mm -hmm. and when they gave her back they said we just ended your timeline the whole one right before right up until you took these mushrooms on tuesday that life 
is over. We just ended that timeline. The so, time police sort of... I know. <clears throat> and they said, now that you have her back, we're giving her back. The two of you are coming back together again on a new timeline. And from this point forward, your job is to flow. Mm -hmm. You are no longer to be or identify with anything. All you can do is move gently, slowly, calmly with love and live out the rest of your life on this new timeline. Awesome. So, okay. For me, because we're wrapping this up, so I'll just say I posted a link in the chat to a video where I talk about this kind of, um, yeah, multiple sort of split personalities, split sort of type, like parallel dimension stuff. Um, yeah, it's, I've had it quite a few times on DMT and it's, um, it's like amazing and bonkers and yeah, it's just very dmt -ish. So I think on that note, because like I said, we've got to get up early for ceremony tomorrow, so we've got to get some sleep. So, but yeah, I just wanted, like I said, I just wanted to touch in with you guys. I will be posting more videos soon. Um, videos all about my San Pedro retreat. Uh, I've still got some videos I want to post around my time in Peru doing this ayahuasca retreat. And yeah, I'm talking about this. I'm going to I'm zooming yeah. tomorrow while I am on set and while we're filming. And if you want to see that, you'll have to become a patron on my private site at mushroomvoice.com. Shameless plug. Mushroomvoice.com. Amanita Dreamer, Dreamer is my channel if you want to go subscribe. And yeah, wish us good ceremony tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll, I'll catch up with you guys when I get back. So thank you all. Thank you all for coming. And thank you all for participating. And it's been awesome. Thank you for coming too. Thanks for having yeah, me. You're good. a great host. It's been, so it's been great. All right, guys. Well, on that note, I shall say au revoir. Or what, what do we say here in Switzerland? Auf Wiedersehen. Something like that. Bye.